Hey guys, Akash here. Today I'm going to teach you what the latest version of React, React 18, brings new in under 8 minutes. So, if you are someone who is just learning React or someone who is working on React and wants to know if React 18 brings any breaking changes, be assured that you can continue with your work or continue with the course that you are already going on. Since React 18 doesn't break anything but just brings new features. Now if you are someone who wants to learn what these new features are and how you can use them with code examples, I'll get into the breakdown right now. The major theme for this release of React that is React 18 is concurrency. Concurrency is basically the ability of a processor to schedule different events and processes according to the various priorities or to execute some part of the code simultaneously. To understand concurrency in the context of React, let's look at a simple React component. On the left hand side, we have a simple React component with a text input field, a button which you can interact with, and a component here which is playing some animation. So if we look at the React dispatcher, let's see what it might be doing here. If a user clicks the button, it will add a click event to the stack. Now if some animation is also playing, it will also try to render some of the next frames of the animation which is running within the React context. If a user is typing, we also want that the user should see what he is typing in real time so that he does not feel like there is some lag in your web page. And there might be some other animation frames which may play after this. So now in the next section, we'll look at how React 18 is giving some of this control to the user with the transition API. Before starting with the next section, it should be worth mentioning that since React runs on a single process, most of React's work goes into prioritizing and running its various functions and callbacks at various positions depending on what the priority of that process is. So the transition API is something which assists in that and gives the developer a way to define how important or what priority to give to the function that he is about to run. One of these APIs is start transition, which allows the developer to indicate to React which actions may cause lag on the screen. Typically, these actions may have been those which you might have been using debounce for. Without debounce, these processes can run away and take up a lot of resources and lock up the browser process. To understand this, let's consider a component with a simple search field. For a component which runs a search field, it might have two functions. One will be to update the actual value of the input variable so that the user sees what he is typing in real time. The second function would be to control what results are being returned from the search field. So in this case, when the user is typing, he would expect to see the results of his search query at a relatively good performance level. However, in this case, it is clear that function one has higher priority than function two because the user expects his what he is typing to be there before the search results to be there. So it is okay if the search results are delayed for a few seconds but the input has to be typed in live. So in this case, we can wrap set search query in start transition, allowing it to handle it as non-urgent and to be interrupted if more urgent updates like clicks or key presses come in. If a transition gets updated by the user, for example, by typing multiple characters in a single row, React will throw out the previous state which wasn't finished and render only the latest update. So, what that means in this case is if that the user starts typing and if the user now is some several steps ahead but start transition might have an older value then it will throw out that older value and then work from the latest value which it gets. Transitions also let you keep most of the interactions snappy even if they lead to significant UI changes. They also let you avoid wasting time rendering content that's no longer relevant by throwing out the old stale content and only working with the new one. React also gives us a new use transition API that we can use to show a loader while the transition is pending. So in this case, 
while the set search query function is running we can show a spinner because that transition is still pending and after this set search query function runs completely that spinner would be replaced with the actual data now to see transitions in action we have this example of a leaning pythagoras tree i will be linking this in the description also now firstly make sure to click on this checkbox which makes each square of the tree block the thread for 0.1 milliseconds now if we try to lean the tree in either direction you'll see that it results in a lot of choppy motion even for the slider however if we enable start transition here and then we try to move this then the slider actually moves relatively fast as compared to the blocking thread which is rendering this tree so we can see that it leads to better interactivity if we have a input element and a element which would be blocking the render process so you can use the transition api for anything from rendering animations to waiting for network calls for a search api next up we have batching batching is something that the developer generally doesn't have to worry about but it's good to know what's happening inside of react behind the scenes so to understand batching let's have a look at this code sandbox in this code sandbox i have two functions called handle click and render click in handle click i have two set state calls being called which will update the state of set count and set flag whenever the handle click function is called we also have render click which actually calls the set state functions inside of a promise so now what react does is that if you call set state inside of any other function it will actually batch those set state calls together and then call them at once so what this causes is that it doesn't cause multiple renders and all of your data is applied in one render this is good for performance related reasons however in react 17 and earlier if you called set state inside of a promise it didn't batch those set state calls automatically and it caused multiple renders which was bad for the user experience to have a demo of this i have created this code sandbox where for the next button i have attached the handle click handler and for the render twice button i have attached render click which calls the set state functions inside of a promise so now let me refresh the page to see what happens from scratch so on initial render tender is actually logged to the console which i have console logged here on clicking next react calls both of these set state functions at once and just calls one render so this is the expected behavior for the old react now let's see what happens when we click on render twice firstly i refresh the console to get a fresh render and then i click on render twice a bunch of times you'll see that it is a bit delayed uh, that's because i've added a set timeout of one second to create a new promise whenever we click on render twice and inside of this promise react actually causes two renders for set count and set flag that is it calls them separately and each time a new render is caused so if we click on render twice we see that this value is actually increased by two here it might not be as visible here but if you run this code sandbox you'll see that render is being called twice so now this is changing with react 18 react 18 will automatically batch all of the set state calls inside of a promise however if a user doesn't want to batch their function calls and they want to cause each set state call to have a separate render they can use the flush sync api call flush sync will batch all of the set state calls inside of it so if you have multiple flush sync calls they will cause a separate render for all of the set state calls inside of it now finally let's look at the most major changes of react 18 which are related to suspense and server side rendering with react 18 the developer finally has the ability to stream html and selectively hydrate the page by using suspense now let's understand what each of these terms mean streaming html basically means 
that the user can make the page interactable even before all of the HTML is loaded in. So for example, with server side rendering nowadays, the client first has to fetch all of the HTML. After fetching the HTML, the client then loads all of the JavaScript code from the server and then hydrates the entire app. What hydration basically does is it maps all of the virtual DOM elements with all of the real DOM elements which are present in the HTML. However, React makes it faster now via Suspense. Now the API for Suspense works like this. You define a part of your components as children for the Suspense component and you define a fallback component. In this case, the spinner would be used as the fallback. Now for comments, when the page is initially loaded in, the Suspense component will display the spinner since the data has yet to be loaded in. Now after the HTML is loaded in, React will stream the new HTML and replace the spinner with the comments component. So this solves part of the problem where you don't have to fetch all of the data before you fetch anything. Now for the second part where all of the page has to be hydrated at the same time, Suspense now allows selective hydration and it can remove certain parts of the page from the hydration and allow them to hydrate separately. So in the case of this comments component, now since it is inside of Suspense, all of the rest of the pages can be hydrated by React and when the new component gets loaded in, React will hydrate it separately. This is known as selective hydration. React also handles the order of hydrating the components in the page. So the user doesn't have to worry about things hydrating out of order and destroying the user's experience. So this gives the benefit of having a more interactable page and having it load faster rather than having to wait for everything to load in before making the page interactable for the user. And finally, the most important change is that React can now make the page interactable even before all of the components have hydrated. So for example, if we have the comments section here which is still hydrating but the user decides to click on a component, for example, a sidebar. Now, in this case, React will actually record that click and after all of the hydration has completed, it can then replay the click event and then all of the changes which will happen after that will happen as if the user actually clicked on the sidebar. So what this results in is that for even low-end devices where hydration can take a long time, events like clicking and typing can be handled by the browser, so it doesn't appear as if the page is stuck. So by combining all of these changes, that is streaming HTML, selectively hydrating the page and making the page interactable even before all of the page has hydrated, suspense results in an even better experience for a user who is loading your website for the first time. We can check examples for suspense inside of this web page which is built by Dan Abramo. Now let's go to one of the code sandbox which was built by Dan Abramo and see how this works. So basically we have the suspense component here which is imported from React. A fallback of loading profile is defined to it and two components called profile details and profile timeline are inside of it. Both of these components now fetch their data from an external source and while their data is loading, this component will actually return an error in regular React. However, from React 18, these components will then notify to Suspense that they are still loading and then Suspense will replace the actual component with the fallback and when all of that data is loaded in, we get the actual component again. So you can play with this and some other demos which are available to see how React 18 works. So to summarize, the main features that React 18 brings are concurrency control with the state transition API, automatic batching of function calls within events and callbacks, and native React loaders with suspense. Now, 
you can read about each of these in even more detail in the blog posts which are linked in the description below and if you like this video be sure to like subscribe and share this with anyone else who you think might enjoy this type of content you can also check out my previous tutorials on react and technologies like dino on this channel itself i post daily content on react and web development on my twitter as well which is at the writing dev so thanks for watching guys and see you next time